Welcome. So I had a few people comment on one of our recent videos asking if we would share a little bit more about how we made the greenhouse off of our chicken coop. So I just wanted to put together a simple quick video that just has a little bit more insight into the build and how we went about this structure on our homestead. Now up front I'll say that I'm a huge advocate in using what you have at your disposal and what you can get your hands on. Um, most of the outbuildings on our homestead are all upcycled materials. These uh, sliding glass doors I actually got from a buddy of mine that is a contractor and he was doing the job and they were redoing all of the patio doors that they had so he called me up and said uh, are you interested and I said you know I am and so he swung them by and we kind of threw this together. Um, I'm saying that basically to let you know that I don't recommend going and buying patio doors. Uh, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Plus, a lot of patio doors and windows nowadays have a low E film on the glass that doesn't let UV light penetrate, uh, which is good for homeowners. It's good for your hardwood floors and your carpets and all that, but it's not going to be good for a greenhouse. You're going to want that ultraviolet light coming through. So just use what you have and be resourceful. You don't have to follow exactly what we're doing here. This is more of just a run through of what we did and kind of some, some basic guidelines on utilizing what you have and making the best of what you have. I will say that it'd be really easy to follow this same design and to just frame the wall instead of using sliding glass doors and then to just wrap that with a greenhouse poly. It'd be a real simple design, real inexpensive, and it would be pretty much exactly what we're doing, just using greenhouse poly rather than having the glass panels. So in making this video, I was looking at some old footage to see if I had anything when I was building it. And really the only video I could find is this video that I took, which is really just a personal video um, of me and my little four-year-old at the time building this together. And that's really just a great testament to how easy this build really was. Good job. It's heavy, huh? Oh, too high. Don't go up that high. This high? Yep, stay right there. That's as high <laughs> as you want to go. Oh, you know, it's pushing the bigger. limits. So it doesn't really show exactly great shots, but I did catch this one clip here. Um, let me pause it. And it shows here the foundation. And so I basically put cinder blocks down and I leveled off those cinder blocks with a level running up the slope there. I started at the lowest spot, which is in the foreground here. And then you can see they're kind of dug in and then they go to even smaller patio stones up at the very top of the picture as it goes away from us. Once that was nice and level, I took some four by fours that I had left over. You can see they're not, it's not even one <laughs> full uh, four by four the length of it which would be ideal but again you just kind of utilize what you have and so once that was level I basically started setting those uh, sliding glass doors on that and screwing those together um, if you look on the inside there you can see I have a two by four that I screwed into the bottom of all of those um, patio doors, the, the large sashes, I guess you could call them even. I was lucky enough, I should say, that those sliding glass doors were wood frame, so it made it a little easier. So you see that two by four. I screwed that into the sliding glass doors, and then I actually toenailed that into that four by four. And then on the inside, in between those cinder blocks, I put plywood, just like I did on the outside there just so all the 
the bedding and stuff wouldn't go underneath that 4x4 four four over time. Here's a, a better shot of that same 2x4 that runs the length on the bottom of the patio doors. And uh, an even older shot that kind of shows you there. You can see the 2x4 and then the 4x4 four four is underneath that. And then you can see that piece of plywood um, is in between the the cinder blocks and it's kind of kitty wampus in this picture because it's just running uh, level with the ground slope so again that's just to keep all that bedding which really goes to show you how high it is in that last shot so here is a good shot again that same uh, video pause it you can just see there's a couple of new two by fours in there but most are old two by fours from job sites you can see there's like nails that i sawzalled off and but just some basic framing just basically framing up those end walls i sheeted it after um, everything was all framed up and you can see that here that after that was all said and done, I primed it and put a good exterior paint on it. I even painted the exposed 2x4s. Just basically trying to get as much life out of that wood as possible. And then on the other end, I just simply screwed the two sliding glass doors together. And because of those thick wooden frames around there it really made a nice sturdy solid corner you can even see there where the handle was so the rest of that gable is just framed up with a vent high and then a vent low and that's really important because this greenhouse gets extremely hot in the summertime and having a vent high and low like that really helps to circulate that air really efficiently. There's a shot of the inside. So you got that fan up top. Got a vent going into the actual chicken coop. And then down low you have that other vent. And I just um, used hardware cloth to block off that vent to keep the chickens from going out and to keep things from coming in here's the other side same thing it's a big egress window that I put hardware cloth on and just use a one by and screwed that into the window jam itself just to hold that cloth on there got a hook that I'll put a box fan on that side so we have two fans running in the summertime Showing off a bit of the eggs here. Nice and colorful. Ladies are producing well. So I made some uh, simple plates here out of some leftover plywood. And at the top of each one of those sliding glass doors, I put that and just kind of screwed them together. Careful not to hit that glass. And then you can see I just used a 2x4 screwed from the outside running across to the coop to keep that top stable. And then also a 2x4 laying flat as a truss for the roof, which is basically just toe nailed into the top there. It doesn't really have to be anything uh, significant as far as weight goes because it's really just a greenhouse poly on the top. I'm going to duck under a roost here and those roosts are actually serving to keep those sliding glass doors from bowing out and those are screwed in as you can see here from the outside with just a couple of exterior screws right through those sliding glass doors. And that runs over and is tied into a nice bearing point on the chicken coop, which is basically just a scrap piece of two by four that I screwed to the wall. Here is a good shot of how I tied 
uh, the top of that, uh, the poly of the roof to the greenhouse. Basically just took one buys and ripped them down and then cut them into like 16 inch sections. And what that allowed me to do is to curl that poly underneath it and screw that to that top ledge there. And that's a real efficient way of getting that poly nice and tight. And then again, I just did the same thing on the outside. Um, in this case, this is an old piece of vinyl that I had laying around. You can see I cut chunks off of that as well because I didn't have enough. And what's nice about this is that you can remove those later on in the summer when it gets really hot. And what I'll do is roll that entire sheet of poly up to the top, clamp it, and that'll stay open for the remainder of the summer. Because again, that greenhouse gets extremely hot. Uh, the door, I threw a, a gate latch on it and it's really just another uh, sash that somebody was tossing away. Threw a one by on it as a door stop and threw some hinges on the other side. And then of course you just frame it to that size. So it works really well. Just kind of showing you here um, the used two buys. The cool thing about um, old reclaimed wood like that is that's a real two by four there. You can see how thick it is. But nothing fancy here. Just kind of showing you how rugged it is. You got to remember that nothing is going to last on the homestead. And uh, though it might not look great to the world, it kind of has a beauty of its own. Here's a tip um, that I've learned over the years. Uh, if you don't want your chickens to roost in certain spots, just throw some three inch screws up there. They might still jump up there, but they're not going to try to. Uh, spend the night in a place like that. They just can't get comfortable So since I have you guys I thought I would show you the rabbit hutch as well and again, this is all um, Just stuff that we have gotten uh, From people that were throwing things away or from the dump just a lot of reclaimed windows and tin And I just wanted to show you a different application, a different setup. But again, just utilizing the scraps. You have these old timbers, um, just a basic stud with like a header running across, which is two two by fours screwed together. And then you have your PVC exterior grade conduit, which I think is made to be buried it's actually uh, UV resistant, so it's really nice. It's going to last a long time. That's probably that and the poly are the only things I think I bought on this uh, build here. So you can see I did kind of like the hoop style roof on this one. I screwed all the windows on the bottom together and then made this header across and drilled holes through the top and then just seated those pipes down in there with a board, like a backer board kind of holding them from kicking out. And that runs all the way down. Works really well. They're just basically sitting in the hole so it's real easy to take this structure apart. Framed up a quick little gable end so I could close it off in the winter. In the summer that'll all be open, both ends will be open. And then you can see on this side I screwed those um, PVC pipes just to that header running across there. And I wanted to show you I didn't even have a full piece of poly to put across this thing. I two-pieced it. But it works great. It's really um, something that I've learned over the years is that the uglier you make things and the more resourceful you are and you use your imagination and your skills of ingenuity, the less you really care as 
it kind of degrades and the animals chew on it and pee on it and it gets rained on and um, if you look here the rabbits are happy it's a totally functional house they're just in there chilling building up fertility for our land it really is all about functionality as far as I'm concerned there's something really gratifying about taking stuff that would just go to a landfill and building a useful structure <laughs> like I said earlier it kind of uh, earns its own beauty and you start looking at things a little differently it does my heart good to see my animals thriving in what essentially would have been just a pile of rubble. I don't know how many generations of rabbits we've had in this structure and it's all stuff that would have just ended up in the landfill. Plus I don't know if they'll remember it but I built these structures with my girls and remember they'd take my pencils and there was all kinds of little shapes and drawings and most of this wood and stuff that's gone now faded but I still have the memories and hopefully they have core memories too that will uh, serve them well in their later years so here I wanted to show you a shot we've had very um, little accumulation of snow this year but when these structures heat up when the sun does come out all the snow just slides right off of that poly off of those roofs on both of these outbuildings and so you get a lot of snow that's going to build up and you don't want that snow to crack that glass i mean that's a ton of weight i've seen that snow four feet high up against that glass so just know that you're going to be shoveling quite a bit if you do build a structure like this but also know that that's one of the first places that when the spring comes around um, you see grass because that solar gain the sun just bouncing off of that window and i don't know if you caught it but my grapevines are about five feet away from that greenhouse and so it actually gets my grapevines producing and, and kind of kicked off for the year a little bit sooner than they would otherwise. So here at the end I wanted to just draw out a simple design for a greenhouse that is essentially just a half of a hoop house mounted to your structure. For those of you that don't have access to uh, patio doors or windows so essentially you're just going to use an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half PVC conduit just like the stuff that was in the rabbit hutch and you're going to mount that to the top of your structure and then at the bottom you're going to build a raised bed out of two by eights or two by tens something that has enough weight to where you could attach it to your building and then screw in the bottom of that conduit to that raised bed and then wrap the whole thing in greenhouse poly and what you're going to have there is a real efficient structure that's very lightweight pretty inexpensive and that you can throw up in an afternoon no problem i would recommend at the bottom of that greenhouse plastic tacking maybe a one by four or another piece of conduit to it and then you can use that to roll that up maybe a couple of feet and that's going to serve as your ventilation and should give you plenty of airflow. Pretty much exactly how they vent greenhouses, your standard greenhouse nowadays. Here I'm just showing how you could frame up a simple door on the gable end there and then the rest of that end you would just wrap in poly as well. I'll show you a front view of that same design. So you have your raised bed at the bottom here. And about two by eight would probably be large enough. 
and then you'd have your conduit coming down. I would space that conduit maybe four feet apart should be plenty and going with an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half piping that's going to give you plenty of strength and rigidity in that half bend. And then as far as mounting the top of the conduit to your structure, I'd probably just screw a two by four ledger board across your building and then tack those conduits down into that two by four at the top. And then for the poly, I would use that same one by four trick where you rip it down, cut it into strips and wrap that plastic around it and then just tack those one by fours to your structure it's a real efficient way to pull that poly super tight and you can do it all by yourself well there you go that's all i have for you i hope this video was insightful and helpful and i do appreciate you stopping by i look forward to sharing more projects with you in the future and things that we're doing here on the homestead for now, I'm going to say I hope you have a great day. Later.